own is probably infinitely cleverer than anything we're ever going to be able to produce. It's the living tissue, its role in the body is sort of multiple. So not only does it provide the sort of the hard anchorage that all of your muscles are attached to, but it also protects a lot of the vital organs. And it also acts as a mineral reservoir, your body's store of calcium, zinc, phosphorus, magnesium, all sorts of things like that. On a daily basis, we put our bones under a lot of stresses and strains, usually, you know, in the order of several times your body weight, just in a sort of typical activity like going up and down the stairs, or if you do something like jogging or running, then it's even more impact on your skeleton. And so what bone is able to do is when the damage accumulates to a certain point, it'll remodel itself. Our challenge is to try and develop something that's as clever as bone already is. So you use a bone graft in a place where you've got a defect which is too big for bone to heal normally under its own steam. So you place the scaffold in there to give it a conductive surface for it to, to work from, basically, to bridge the gap. So you basically need um, your ceramic powder, so you mix it with water, you add a binder to it and then you foam it up and then you dry that, put it in an oven and then fire it to give it final strength. What makes our graft the best graft possible is the fact that we've got the chemistry optimised so that you get the right sorts of proteins absorbed to the surface and also the right form of um, ionic exchange with the environment to stimulate rapid bone regeneration. We've also got control of the pore structure on both the micron, very small pores inside the struts and also on the larger pores that the bone grows into, and also interconnected pores within the struts so that we get nutrient transfer and protein and ion exchange through the thickness of the struts. I was interested in trying to understand how and why it works. I mean, if you think about it, you've got an inorganic ceramic material that's stimulating a biological process. And if we can understand how we're doing that, is there ability then to be able to stimulate biological process without necessarily having to stick a scaffold in there at all. The graft now has um, around 10% of the synthetic bone graft market share in the US and it's been used by over 200,000 people globally. Knowing the material that you've invented has been able to be used to do something like correct, say, spinal deformation. That's quite gratifying. Just knowing that you've developed something that's actually improved the quality of life of a, of a number of different people, really.